When you pit two fighter aircraft against each other in a duel, each one will have its own strengths and weaknesses. A pilot that knows these attributes will have an advantage over a pilot that doesn't. So how can you know how an aircraft will perform in a fight? You look at its energy maneuverability diagram, and we'll go over how you can read one in this video. The maneuverability of an aircraft is not a single fixed number. It varies based on several factors, the most important being energy. That's because energy provides potential to maneuver. We usually express our energy level as airspeed, and that airspeed is like money. You want to build it up and save it until you have something worthwhile to spend it on. You can spend that money to buy yourself some temporary extra maneuverability for a shot on the bandit, or to deny that bandit a shot on you. But if neither of these opportunities presents itself, you should always strive to maintain or gain energy. In BFM, we know the tighter turning aircraft that can turn the greatest number of degrees over a specified time period has the advantage. We always want to find that point on an aircraft's performance chart that will give us the most maneuverability. Since that performance envelope changes depending on multiple factors, you'll see several EM diagrams in an aircraft's manual with each one made for a specific set of parameters. Typically, you'll find the chart is made for a specific combination of airframe weight, altitude, and throttle setting. That's because an aircraft with a full load of gas will turn differently than when it's nearly empty. Altitude has a significant effect too. A fighter can expect to be much more maneuverable in the denser air found at lower altitudes than up high. Going from sea level to 30,000 feet, you can see a minimum turn radius go from 1,200 feet to over 3,600 feet. That's an increase of over 300%. As we read over our chart, we'll focus on certain numbers we want to maximize. There's turn rate here on the left side, and these gold lines show our turn radius. As we move up on the chart, turn rate goes up and turn radius goes down. That means that when we're looking for maximum performance, we want to go up on the chart. The two main ways a pilot has to control position on this chart are speed and G-load. During a turn, we can increase G-load with aft pressure on the stick, which will move us up on the chart. But that comes at the cost of speed. Continuing with the money analogy, pulling more Gs is spending that money we built up. So we want to use that money wisely and keep our aircraft at a point that works best for our current situation. Let's dive a little deeper and go over how you can find those points. We know we can move around this chart by changing airspeed and G-load. But there are limits, and those are outlined by the red lines. On this segment, we see the maximum lift limit of a T-38. Here's the G-limit of this airframe, and over here is the speed limit. No matter what we do, we're stuck inside the red lines with this aircraft. These blue lines represent how much G-load needs to be pulled to reach that part of the chart. In other words, if you're flying at 300 knots calibrated and want to turn at 8 degrees per second, then you would need to pull back on the stick enough for 3 G's, since that point is sitting right by the 3 G line. Now what about all these green lines? These are specific power lines, and they tell us how much energy we'll gain or lose when we're at that point on the chart. These are the lines that bring this entire chart together, and are also the most likely to confuse people. You'll sometimes hear them called PS lines or P sub S, and what they represent is what a pilot needs to do to maintain a turn at a specific speed and G-load. When you see a negative number here, it means that to maintain a turn on the line, you will need to descend at the rate shown. So if you're flying at 400 knots in a 6G turn, you would need to descend at 200 feet per second to maintain the 400 knot speed. Without that descent, the jet would start losing speed, and then we would see performance start drifting left on the chart. Once we hit the lift limit line, then we would see a drop in turn rate. Both the turn rate and speed would continue to drop until we reached the green power line that matched what the aircraft was doing. So in a level turn, that would be here at the zero line. In this scenario, we started at 400 knots before we lost over 100 knots of airspeed in our turn. That took us from about 13 degrees per second of turn down to just 9. That's pretty significant. Now let's continue that scenario. Imagine there's a bandit that started at the same speed but stayed on the zero line here instead of pulling 6 Gs. 
In that case, the Bandit would have a slight edge with 10 degrees per second of turn and a whopping 400 knots of speed. That extra speed could be cashed in for a temporary rate boost at 13 degrees per second if an opportunity for a shot presented itself. And that's just one example of how two fighters can start without any advantage, but one can get ahead by managing energy well. Remember to treat energy like money. You want to build it or maintain it until you have a reason to spend it. So don't spend it frivolously. There are two points on this chart that you'll hear people talk about when it comes to maximum performance. One of them is the sustained turn rate. The other is the corner velocity, which is also called the instantaneous turn rate. The easiest one to define is the corner velocity. On any EM chart, it will be this point at the top where the lift limit and the G limit meet. This is where the airframe physically cannot produce any more turn rate. You get this maximum rate by flying at the speed listed under the peak and then turning with as much G as you can pull out of the jet. This rate is called instant because it can't be held for very long, and that's because the peak is above the zero power line. That line with the zero is where we can sustain our speed in a turn without descending. Anything above the line means we will start losing energy unless we dive. So it's on this line that we'll find our second important number, the sustained turn rate. On this chart, that theoretical best sustained rate would be right here. At 455 knots, pulling approximately 5 and 3 quarter G, we would expect to get a little more than 10 degrees per second out of the jet. One thing to remember is that this chart is based on theoretical numbers. What you experience in actual flight may vary. An engine might be very old and not produce as much thrust as the factory specs. Or it might be the end of the mission and your jet has a thousand less pounds of fuel weighing it down. Either way, actual performance would vary. So it's not uncommon to just round to something that's easy to remember, like 5G and 410 knots for max sustained rate. It's still providing a little more than 10 degrees per second, just like the theoretical maximum. You might have wondered what these two things are on the chart. These represent the student and the bandit when the student is given an advantage. In this case, the student is allowed to pull up to 6G, while the bandit is limited to just 5. This is typically done to demonstrate how to exploit an advantage when flying the same airframe. Without the limit on the bandit, there wouldn't be a difference in performance to exploit. It might not seem like much, but it's actually a lot. Here we can see the student is getting approximately 2 degrees per second over the bandit and a turn radius that's 800 feet smaller. Since they would be completing a 360 degree circle every 28 seconds, that means the student is gaining a whopping 56 degrees of advantage every time they circle. Here's how that would play out. In a neutral position on opposite sides of a circle, they would start 180 degrees apart. After one turn, that would drop to just 124. Then after the second time around, the student would be in the bandit's rear arc, ready to fire a heat seeker or move in for guns. Don't underestimate an advantage just because it sounds small. Take advantage of it, and remember that a lot of times the best tactic is to just maintain your best sustained turn rate. We went over a lot just now, so let's do a quick recap. EM diagrams are made for specific parameters including aircraft weight, altitude, and throttle setting. Lighter weight, lower altitude, and higher throttle settings will give you better performance. A diagram only works for that specific set. It won't be accurate if the parameters don't match up. We also went over the various lines on the charts, like the red airframe limits, the yellow turn radius lines, G loads in blue, and the excess power or PS lines in green. Then we covered corner velocity and sustained turn rate. It's important to remember that corner velocity is temporary and sustained can be held. As we continue this series on BFM, we'll go over some practice scenarios where you can put this knowledge to the test. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the video that'll pop up next, and thanks for watching.